Hi, my name is Mary Hunter. I wrote the program notes for the concert of Alexandra Malofeyev, and I'm reading them here. The first piece he's going to play is a sonata by Mozart in C minor, K457. Mozart's sonata was written in 1784 in Vienna for the pianist Teresa Trattner, who was his student and the wife of Thomas Trattner, his landlord at the time, and a well-known music publisher and retailer. This sonata is one of more than a dozen piano works written for Mozart's female students, many of whom were first-rate musicians, limited in professional opportunities because of their gender. The key of C minor, which is the same key as Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and the stormy music often associated with it, as it is in the Beethoven, is often taken to represent a truer or more direct expression of emotion than is found in Mozart's more usual major mode music, and often as a harbinger of romanticism. But it's more accurate to think of the fast outer movements of this sonata as quasi-theatrical explorations of such affects as rage and grief rather than as expressions of Mozart's inner life. The slow movement is comparably th theatrical, but rather than rage and grief, it takes Empfindungskeit, or extreme sensitivity, as its topic. The sudden changes of gesture and somewhat fragmentary phrases are characteristic signs of this mode, which was also a popular subject in literature of the time. The second piece Mr. Malofeyev is going to play is a sonata in G minor, opus 22, by Nikolai Metna. And then after the intermission, he's going to play Two Tales, opus 48, by the same composer. Nikolai Metna was born in Russia, studied piano at the Moscow Conservatory, graduating with that institution's highest prize in piano, after which he decided to devote his life to composition, despite not having taken the full pre-professional composition course. He was not a supporter of the 1917 Bolshevik Revolution, and in 1921, he and his wife left Russia for Europe. His musical style was as anti-revolutionary as his politics, however, and he did not find success in the post-World War I European world of artistic ferment and experimentation. Rachmaninoff, seven years his senior and already successful as both a pianist and a composer, championed Metner's career by helping arrange some tours in the United States in the late 1920s and early 1930s, and also by playing his music. Metner found a warmer welcome in England than anywhere else and moved there in 1935. One of the more striking events of Metner's life was the establishment in 1946 by Jayachamaraja Wadeyar, the last Maharaja of Mysore, of a Met Metner society which supported the composer in making recordings of many of his own works. Metner's music shares several characteristics with Rachmaninoff's. Both can be quite virtuosic, involving extremely fast passages, the use of the entirety of the keyboard in very short spaces of time, complicated chords that follow each other in quick succession, different and equally complicated work for both hands simultaneously, and melodies that need to be articulated with individual fingers while the other fingers are doing elaborate accompanimental work. Both composers like the lower reaches of the piano, especially at beginnings and endings, and the openings of the two sonatas in this program, which were written at more or less the same time, are remarkably similar. Both composers play constantly with rhythm, using syncopation, that is, accents not on the strong beats, rhythmic dislocation, example of that is a tune which doesn't fit with where you would tap your foot with the beat, and both require a mixture of ry rhythmic rigidity and flexibility in performance. However, Metna's melodies are not as grabby as Rachmaninoff's most famous tunes, 
And there are mo more moments like Beethoven or Mendelssohn than in Rachmaninoff. Metner's Sonata in G minor, Opus 22, written between 1901 and 1910, is the fourth of his 14 piano sonatas and is one of the ones without an illustrative title. Some of his others are designated tragic sonata, romantic sonata, threatening sonata, and so on. This one is in three movements, fast, slow, fast, but they're barely separated at all and they share a lot of material. So the effect is completely different from the three movements in the Mozart sonata, which are like three short stories, loosely connected by some underlying procedures. The Metner movements are more like the three chapters of a tightly woven novel, where the same characters and events persist throughout. The most important idea in the piece is the very opening few notes, which consist of an upward leap followed by a return to the original note, da dee dum, and then a twitchy dotted rhythm, ta-da! Over the course of the piece, the dotted rhythm gets incorporated into the rising motif. The middle movement, whose opening is marked by a couple of short silences, begins with this, as does the last movement. The last movement brings back a lot of material from before, some of it quoted literally and some transformed. The first of the two skazki, or tales, lives up to its title of dance tale by being all about rhythm. It's a work of Schumannesque caprice with touches of syncopation reminiscent of the Dvorak Slavonic dances. Its middle section is a clumsy march in the low register of the piano perhaps an unwanted guest at the ball, who knows, which morphs back into the original material. The second skazka, or dance uh, tale, is called Elf Tale, and it alternates between dreamy, sly, and lightning fast, because elves are complicated creatures, I suppose. The last piece Mr. Malofiev will play is the Rachmaninoff first sonata in D minor, opus 28. Like Metner, Rachmaninoff left Russia as a result of the Bolshevik Re Revolution and lived in both the U US and Europe for the rest of his life. His career as a pianist in the US was more successful than Metner's and he made a considerable income. His first sonata from 1907, which he wrote while still in Russia, is not the work of a very young man, he was 34, but it displays the energy and technical power of a young performer out to dazzle the audience. It's less well known and generally less well regarded than his second sonata, but it's an astonishing encyclopedia of pianistic effects. Its thematic material is more short ideas than long breathed and memorable tunes, but the first movement includes several repetitions of a melody that sounds very much like Russian Orthodox chant always placed over a rich and atmospheric accompaniment. This material comes back briefly in a kind of apotheosis at the very end of the last movement. I'm sure you will enjoy the virtuoso Alexander Malofiev's performance of this monumental piece. <laughs> 